Let's learn how to use variables in Java. As talked about in the previous video, variables are basically storage containers for information of different types. And in Java, we have restrictive typing. We call it statically typed variables, static meaning kind of unchanging. So in Java, we need to define the type of variable that we're using. Let's recap some of the most common types that we might use. The first one is int for integer, positive or negative whole numbers. And remember that when we're creating a variable, we first determine its type, and then we give it a name. Maybe I'll call this num, and a semicolon to end my line, as is common for Java syntax. I've now initialized a new variable. Its contents are empty, although for an integer, not writing anything that is assigned to it means its value will be set to zero to start with. However, I'm able to set whatever initial value that I want by adding in an equal sign. Now I can assign a number to this integer. Let's go with five for now. I've now initialized a new variable. The type of the variable is an integer. The name of it is num, and I've assigned through the equal sign the value five. Do you remember that the name is totally customizable by you? You're only limited by not referring to any other commands in Java that might be confusing, but give it whatever name you want. I could call it number. I could have called it five, although this might have been restrictive because I can't change it later and it still makes sense. Generally with our naming, we want to be as precise and clear as possible without wasting any time in our reading. So num is a nice kind of middle ground to doing so. Another type of value is a float. Maybe we call this a decimal num. A float is a decimal number, but when we're writing in NetBeans, it's going to be a little bit picky, maybe 3.14. I actually need to put an F beside float to make sure that Java knows it's float and not a different type of decimal value called a du double, other decimal val, or num, I'll put here, 3.14. Doubles and floats are two different ways of expressing decimals, but in slightly different ways. And similarly, there's actually other ways we can represent whole numbers as well. Let's take a quick peek at another document I'll tab over to here. In Java, we have a whole bunch of different types of data types that we can pick and choose between depending on our needs. You'll notice that a byte, its size is one byte, whereas an integer is four bytes. So an integer data type takes up four times as much memory as a byte does. So why not always just use a byte to save memory? Well, it only stores numbers from negative 128 to 127. If I try to define, and I'll go back up here, a byte, I'll call this a small num, and equal to 200, I'm going to have an issue. And if I mouse over, I'll see incompatible lossy conversion from int to byte. Because it's over that threshold of 127, it's going to try to interpret it as a different type. So bytes have to fit within that range of values. So if you know you have only really small numbers, you want to save some space, you could use a byte or a short where you have a much larger range, but still limited to within positive or negative 32 and a bit thousand. Integers have a much larger range in the two billions. Or if you're working with really massive values, you might need to use a long, which uses even more data, but allows us to reach, what is this, millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions, septillions? What's the next one there? So quite a bit bigger of a range, but a bit wasteful if our numbers aren't going to get that large in terms of the amount of memory things use. So here you have four different ways of storing whole numbers in variables, depending on your purposes. But seeing as how our computers have a lot of memory these days and we're not too concerned about wastage, we usually just go with int. So as we head back over here, we'll just leave int as our main one for storing whole numbers. In terms of decimal values, well, we have float and double. And float is half as much memory but it also is only accurate to six or seven decimal place, places, whereas a double will be accurate closer to 15 decimal places. And because of memory limitations, generally speaking, we can just use doubles and be totally fine with it because it allows us for lots of precision and we don't have to worry about adding that annoying little F when we put things for floats. So we have whole numbers, we have decimal numbers. What else do we have to work with? Well, sometimes we like to work with booleans, which are true or false. I'm just going to name it true or false for now. And I can set it to true or I can set it to false. 
Booleans are on or off switches, yes or no's, trues or falses, and we use them all throughout our coding logic to trigger different conditions or to check different parameters or different scenarios of our logic. And we have the variable Boolean that we can refer to to work with this. And our last variable in this section is a char or a care. I'm going to call this letter because a care or char is just meant to store a single letter with a single apostrophe around either side of it. So I can store whatever letter or character that I want. It can be a percentage sign, any basically any singular key on the keyboard that actually has a visual outlook, although we have some limitations we'll talk about in our string section for what might or might not work in there. If I try to add a couple characters, I'm going to have an issue because this is no longer a single character. It is now something altogether different. And as a side note, in one of our earlier units, we're going to be working with encryption and really focusing on how we can actually work with characters and numbers in combination to solve some really interesting encryption problems, but more on that later. So here we have what we consider our main, uh, we call these primitives. Primitive variables, the nice, simple, straight to the point ones, whole numbers, decimal numbers, booleans, and characters. And depending on how you view things, you might consider the last main variable we want to talk about kind of in the same category, but really, it should be in a category of its own called strings. And these, this is the variable for text, although it's a little more complicated. In that unit, we'll get into the real nitty gritty of how strings work. Technically, they're objects based off of a class. This is why we capitalize a string when we write it. I'm going to say this is a word. And in this case, for a string, we add the quotation marks. Hello. And I can add any content in there that I want with a couple of restrictions we'll talk about in that section in a little more detail as well. I could also have a string for a phrase. No problem. Uh, this is a full sentence. So strings are really adaptable. They're really just big, long lists of characters all strung together. Well, which is why the word string is here. They're all strung together in a big, long uh, combination of things. So here we go. I have a couple different examples of strings. And once again, for variables, the type, the name, equals to a sign, and then the content that's suitable for it on the side. And just to make sure it's really clear, if I try to go string, uh, new string, equals three, it's not going to work. Java is very picky. It doesn't allow me to, to mix and match data types, and I have to be very specific about it. Just to make sure that we're working with these different variable assignments properly, let's do a couple quick printouts. I'm going to go SOUT hit tab, and now that I'm just going to be referencing variables, I'm going to get rid of those quotation marks. And let's just see what's print out, printed out when I print out num, which is this value 5 at the top here. Let me run my program, and I should see 5 popping out. Wonderful. However, let's make sure that we understand that variables don't just aren't just only initialized, but they're variable. They're able to be changed. They're containers that you can dump out the contents of and replace it with something new. I can actually go num equals 10. Notice I didn't put the int in front of num again because I've already defined it. Num as an integer already exists. Now I can just simply refer to it. However, what I've done here is basically dump the five out and replace the contents with the number 10. So now when I run this, I instead of having five pop out, 10 pops out, even though it was set to 5 initially before the last thing that happened before it printed out was 10. Let's do another printout here. I'm going to have uh, this time be the double, let's go other decimal value, uh, sorry, decimal num, and set my other decimal num to be equal to, let's go with uh, just 1.1, run this here. And we have the new value put in place. In future tutorials, we'll review about how we can actually have these things interact with one another. Um, one, actually, yeah, we'll deal with more things in the future tutorial. I think that's enough for now to remember how we just work with basic variables in the first place.